I'm a bit, I'm a bit blown away right now. I'm, I'm like stunned, you know, like Elemental 3.7 just rolled out and there are some things I was looking forward to, but there was a new feature in there I just wasn't expecting. Uh, and I'll be honest, I slept on it. I kind of thought that, oh, that sounds neat. It might be a little bit gimmicky. I mean, that was just my initial thoughts. And then, then I went and tested it out and I was on it all night last night and I'm just blown away right now. And this is something that anybody, anybody right now that is building websites for clients, or even if you're collaborating with a team, but especially if you're building websites for clients, you need to use this feature. Like this is an absolute must have and definitely, definitely a game changer. I'm not just hyping it up, not just because I'm a fan of Elementor, but this is something I've been using in my design process and using with mock-up designs and I've always wanted to use with Elementor. And I know there's other tools out there that could do the same thing, but I really don't want to add new plugins for stuff and make the site heavier. Now having something like this baked into Elementor, Woo! <laughs> I'm, a, I, I'm all right, cool. I'm a bit excited, as you could tell. And I, by the way, I'm a huge geek anyway, so I always geek out over stuff, especially like this. But this is something I can see definitely useful. That's going to be Elementor Notes. So I'm going to tell you straight out: Notes is not a gimmick feature. It is nothing like it. This is this is a game changing feature. This is one of those ones where it's just a it's a very sweet surprise. So let's go ahead and start and just do a walkthrough on notes, how to use it. That way you can start to get familiar with it. Then I'll break down how you could utilize this and what to watch out for when using this with clients. So to start off with, we're gonna use this site right here as our example. And you see right here, I got this notes. Now, if you go to your dashboard and you go to Elementor to your settings and you go over to your experiments, it's gonna be in your experiments and kinda of gotta go down a bit and you're gonna find it right here in notes. So if you don't see it, go there and go ahead and you can just put on active. But now since it is a stable version, this is stable, it's no longer beta, uh, you could go ahead and put on default and by default it is active. So click on save changes and then from here, now you're gonna see your notes. To use this, just go ahead and click on it. It's gonna put you in notes in the notes view right here. So you see whenever you're hovering over anything, you could hover over any widget or a part of the website right here. So let's say uh, you wanna add a note here, like what would this say? All right, go ahead and leave a note there. And now somebody else could come in and reply to it. So you wonder who? Well, let's be a client. Let's let a client reply to it. Now, you could go ahead and create an account for a client. So I'm going to show you how I have that set up. Right here, I created a client account. And I have the client logged in right here. So we're looking at everything from a client's viewpoint right here. And you see the client doesn't see notes right here. But if we go over to our site, as the admin, we could go to the client. We could scroll down here, down towards the bottom. And then here on the Elementor notes, you see permissions. Go ahead and turn that on and update the user. All right, let's go back over to our client's viewpoint. Click on that and now the client can see notes. And now the client can click on notes. And it works the same with team members as well. So we go here and now the client can see they got a note. Now it says 10 right here and that's because I was running tests and I think I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and I started deleting them. Uh, you know, this is something hopefully will be fixed by elements or where it could always start back over at one. But we can see here, so the client could go back here and they could put an at, put the at symbol and now every user comes up. So they could tag me or another team member right here, at Jeffrey. Uh, let's put a title. So they could tag me right here. And what happens is I just got an email. I'm going to show you that in a minute, but I just literally got an email saying that, Hey, this client just responded to me. They just tagged me. If we go back here to the front end, you can see everything happens in real time. I didn't even refresh the page. I could just happen in real time. I could go ahead and message back to him at client, you know, okay. Then I could reply back to a team member. 
is probably going to get an email. I have to let him know, hey, disregard the email, but let me go ahead and uh, holler at one of my team members, our awesome developer, Stefano. Hey, can you check this out? So you could do this on any part of the website right here. You could go over here to the menu, you could do it. You could drop it down in the footer. Any single part you could think of, you could click on it. You know, this could work like, hey, could we change the image here? You know, uh, what title will we put here? Could we change the color here? So that way the client could go through, instead of leaving like a Google Doc or some messy email with just like all kinds of stuff like change this, change this, change this, you could send this over to the client and they can give you a real life list of what they want to do and show where to do it. And say a client feels like, hey, something's not working. They could go right to where it's not working. Like, hey, this button isn't working. You know, at Jeffrey. All right. And there we go. So... I mean, the level of communication that we could do here and to get feedback and to get clear clarity of feedback, this is my, I, I was not expecting this. When I saw notes, I thought it was going to be like, oh, there's a little section where people could write notes to each other. I didn't realize that they were doing this right here. So I could turn this off and now we're back into regular mode right here. You can just go ahead and click on notes or click this off. Same thing here, if, say if uh, the client they're getting emails and they don't want to keep getting all these emails. The client has a bit of control over that. The client could go to their profile and then over here, they could go to their Elementor notes and they could turn off the notifications. Uh, another thing too, I did want to point out that I thought was really good uh, about this. I'm glad Elementor did this is if we put on notes here, so the client could go to our notes but they can't edit them. They can edit their own, but they can't edit ours. So I'm really glad that they did that because if we go to our notes right here, as an admin, we could edit everything. Oops, now let's go there. You see, I could edit my text. I could even edit the client's text right here. So maybe we need to make things clear for our team. Um, there's different situations, but at least the client can't go back and, you know, change anything. Not to say clients are dishonest or something, but, you know, I'm glad that we could put our information here and not have that messed up. So we got that. And let me show you. Then we get an email like this. It's very simple, straightforward. It has a link to the page. Uh, I'm right now communicating with Elementor, seeing what we could do about getting like templates made or being able to adjust our emails. I know this is the very beginning of notes, but just a heads up, I am trying to, I'm looking for areas where we could make some improvements. I think on the emails, it'd be super dope if we can make our own, branded our styles, and maybe even add in our own notes. So hopefully we could do that down the line. Uh, another cool thing that I wanted to show was, let me go to another page here. Let me go ahead and view it. And I want to add a note on this page right here. Like, let me see here. Can we make this purple? And I'm going to tag team member right here. So let's go ahead and leave a note there. Now, if we're back on our home page, now, if we go to these three dots right here, you're gonna see we have other options. Like this is just showing the current page. Now let's click on the whole site. We click on the whole site. Now we can see the other page as well. So say the client is leaving notes on the About Us page, the contact page. They're adding notes throughout the entire site. We could go here and take a look at all the notes that are being added. And then too, we could just put all notes or only mine. Uh, there's many people putting notes on here. It might be helpful to only look at the ones I'm tagged in and the ones that I am writing. And then same thing for resolved and unread. And then too, we're able to delete our notes as well. So I could go in right here and I could delete it or I could go ahead and put it down as resolved. So now it's all good. That's why we have now this grayed out, this grayed out bit right over here. I'm still not sure what this eyeball does. Oh, maybe it means that, okay, it's just showing that's okay. It just needs to be seen or maybe it's showing us who has seen it. Hmm.
All right. Let me see. Let's do a little test right here from the client's point of view. Seen by Jeffrey. Wow. Okay, so you hover over it, and it says who's seen it. Look at that, real time. I didn't even have to refresh the page. All right, I'm blown away, guys. I'm geeking out on this video right now, but this is some powerful stuff right here. Wow. Okay. Game changing, for real. Cool, cool. So, what else is there to it? I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so, I used to use a tool just like this, and I use this right here in Vision. This was always my go-to tool, and we do custom design. I'm a UI and a web designer. I like to do designs that are strategic, and I design things in Figma and Sketch, and I always create my mock-ups and my designs, which are more high fidelity, more high level, more bespoke, and I create the mock-ups, and what I usually do in my design process is I put the mock-ups, I put them inside here in Envision, send them to the client. The client uses a tool just like this where they could click on the design, saying what they like, what they don't like, asking questions about it. And that always helped out with our feedback and revision process. It saved us a lot of time. We're able to be more in line with the client and we've always had positive experiences with the client when communicating like this. It's so much better than just sending the design to the client and then having the client try to write down all the feedback. Instead, there's a visual. They have more control over it. It makes the client more, more part of the project. So always we did that with the mock-ups. Now, I did find this problem happening whenever I wanted to build a site for a client. Maybe the site didn't have that big of a budget where we could do a mock-up. Maybe we just needed a quick turnaround time. So we weren't able to get that kind of feedback. And so the client just got kind of got to trust the direction. And then, you know, a lot of times it came out good. But sometimes, you know, it happens where the client's like, oh, my God, we're in the wrong direction. And they're surprised with it. So I see this as a powerful tool especially for the web creators out there that just design inside Elementor, like they design as you are building the site. Now, a pitfall you wanna watch out from. This is very important right here when using a tool like this. You want to establish before you go through this type of process with a client, you wanna establish rules and a scope. If you allow yourself and the client to get into this this space where there's this constant back and forth, it is going to eat up so much time. It is going to turn into a long drawn out process. You're going to be facing scope creep. So the best thing to do is de define it. Define that, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build a landing page. And this is just an example. This is what I would do. I would let the client know we're going to build a landing page. After the landing page is built, you're going to be able to go through using notes and let us know what you like and what you don't like. And then we're going to do revision on that. And we're going to do X amount number of revisions. Usually it's about one or two. I don't like to do anything more than that. The reason why we want to do that is if we start going through each section and letting the client do that, they're going to try designing the website on their own. You know, they're going to be all over the place. Design is subjective and you know, we could always fall into that that space of perfectionism. It's it's a pitfall. It's a trap. So you want to be careful of that. Make sure you define how it's going to go before going. And then this is really important. This is why I liked as well. Let's go back over here. Let's go. Let me go back to the back end right here to my dashboard. I'm gonna go back to Elementor to my settings to my experiments to my notes, and this is what I would do. I would turn this thing off. <laughs> I would turn it off constantly. That way the client all of a sudden is like, damn, all right, no time is done, all right? Open up times of windows for the notes. Don't leave those notes open all the time because you're gonna have the client on there all the time. I could see that happening already. I've been through it before. You know, I've been through it before with the design process, and it was a learning experience. Uh, the one thing I learned from, you know, communicating this way uh, with designs when I'm doing it with Envision is to set a certain number of, of rounds, you know, rounds per page or per whatever scope, and then to have a window of time open for it. That way, 
we go through the feedback and revisions and we finalize that as quickly as possible. Well, I'm excited for this feature. How about you? How do you feel about this? I'm interested to hear your thoughts. How do you see this could help you out inside your workflow? Drop them inside the comments. I'm interested to see other people's ideas and ways that they could utilize this tool because I think we're just scratching the surface right here. This is one of those game changers. I don't say that often. I said that with the global styles. I saw the global styles was a game changer. This is, I mean, the few game changers I saw when Elementor built headers and footers and, you know, the, the, the theme builder, that was a game changer. Global styles, that was a game changer. Notes, this is the new game changer right here. I'm speechless. I just, I just want to drop my mic right now and walk away. All right, cool. I look forward to hearing your feedback. See you again soon with more Elementor stuff and web design related content. All right, thank you.